Welcome to a remote edition of the Cheryl Reeve Show, part of the TalkNorth.com podcast network. Uh, Cheryl is in Washington, D.C. with her team, the Minnesota Lynx. They had a really cool event today. We're going to tell you a lot about that. First, I want to thank our sponsors, Freehouse in downtown Minneapolis, North Loop, Minneapolis. Our next live show will be at the Freehouse, 6 p.m. on Monday, June 11th. We had a nice turnout for our last show. This will be our second live show. We'd love to see you come out. You can get there early for happy hour, which ends at 6. You can come after happy hour and just hang out with us. Uh, we will be glad to uh, schmooze, chat with you, have live questions. We'll give away some apparel. Uh, it, again, great place to hang out, whether we're there or not. Uh, we'll tell you more about the free house in a little bit. And also, uh, Lynn Hall, which is uh, on 2640 Lindale Avenue, South Minneapolis. Uh, the Lynn Hall is also a new sponsor of the Cheryl Reeves Show. Uh, the Lynn Hall is a market-inspired restaurant, event space, kitchen, TV studio, and incubator kitchen. As a collective of a collective of culinary-driven individuals, Lynn Hall makes wholesome food, teaches classes, bakes bread, makes delicious drinks, and always has something new and nourishing to share from morning until night. And one of the reasons Lynn Hall is uh, sponsoring this show in particular, the Lynn Hall is thrilled to launch the Wisdom Series Featuring, cha- featuring change makers in our community whose achievements have paved the way for future generations. Join founder Ann Spath as she interviews award-winning sports journalist and on-air personality Michelle Tafoya on June 7, 7th. From That's tomorrow, by the way. We're doing this show on Wednesday, June 6th. So June 7th from 7 to 9 p.m. at Lynn Hall, Michelle Tafoya uh, will be in the first installment of the Wisdom Series. Tickets are $25. Proceeds benefiting the Young Women's Initiative of the Women's Foundation. Visit thelinhall.com for ticket information. Let's get on to the news of the day. Uh, the Minnesota Lynx and Cheryl Reeve, uh, they wound up not not being at the, uh, at the White House. Basically, people who do not end, end up getting invited to the White House end up being, I think, I, I think you can pretty much plan on winning a championship. That's the way it works. Philadelphia Eagles, Minnesota Lynx, we know that uh, neither the Cavaliers nor the Warriors would accept an invitation if they win it this year. The Warriors weren't interested last year. So instead, the Minnesota Lynx ends up going to Payne Elementary, partnering, and, and correct me if I get any of this wrong, Cheryl, partnering with Samaritan's Feet and handing out new shoes and socks to underprivileged children. Uh, again, correct me if I get anything wrong, but tell me about the day. Well, it was an incredible day. You know, we we uh, we started the day off with a a practice and preparation for the game tomorrow, and then we got together, uh, boarded our bus, and went over to Payne Elementary over in uh, Southeast Washington, and were met there uh, by the volunteers of uh, Samaritan Feet, and obviously the folks at Payne Elementary, the you know the principals and you know the the teacher and that sort of thing, and um, just a an incredible time, uh, very moving, I think, for our entire group uh, that we were able to serve this community. Uh, you know, we, we started off with an assembly uh, where myself and Rebecca Brunson and the founder and CEO of Samaritan's Feet, Manny, that um, he, uh, you know, he kind of talked about his program and his story uh, of being a young person and in, in, in being impoverished in West Africa and just kind of the journey, uh, how it came to be and how he's now the founder and CEO of a tremendous uh, organization that gives, uh, you know, give, gives shoes, uh, provides shoes for uh, many, many that, that, uh, don't have the abilities to have shoes. And so, um, yes, a tremendous day in terms of uh, after the assembly, we, um, we had a number of volunteers and, you know, obviously our players included that each kid came through and had their feet washed, uh, by our players and our staff and, and, uh, were, were issued, uh, new Jordan brand shoes along with Nike socks. And, uh, you should see the faces of these kids, uh, when these boxes were opened and, you know, this, this school is a Title I school uh, where, where 30% uh, are homeless, you know, a large, large population sheltered, um, the uh, 100% low income, you know, I think it was 60% at risk. And so it was just a really incredible, you know, th- these kids, you know, just, it just reminds me how resilient young people are, uh, the joy that they had, uh, the way that they conducted themselves. It was really, really special, and and I'm really, really hopeful for our future. You know, the kids like this. 
And uh, let, let me make this point, too. This could have been just a day off in Washington, D.C. for a, a bunch of basketball players. They, you know, your team chose to spend their day doing this. They did. And, and, and actually, we were, we were supposed to uh, stay in Minnesota another day and, and uh, like you said, enjoy a day off before we were you know, headed out here to play our game uh, on Thursday. So, you know, we, we got together. It was shortly after our home opener, and um, the players came to me and said, you know, Coach, when we go to Washington, when, we're, when we have a few days in between, we'd like to go a day early. And to commemorate our championship, we would like to have a day of service. You know, is there anything you can think of that we could do? And oddly enough, or crazy enough, how, how, how life works is I had just met uh, Manny from, from uh, uh, Samaritan's Feet. I was just introduced to him in Minneapolis the, the morning after our, our uh, home opener. And so I rang Manny up quickly. I said, hey, I know we just met this morning, and I know we're going to partner at some point here in our community, but do you think there's any way we could pull off something in Washington, D.C. to commemorate our championship? And I'll tell you what, Manny just, he sprung into action and, you know, he came to DC just days after we talked and, 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 and partnered with Payne Elementary and just got the ball rolling. And then our staff, uh, we, you know, we really, uh, we owe so much to them for being able to pull this off to the level that it was pulled off and to make it such a meaningful experience. And it's exactly what our players wanted to do. And I'm really, really proud of them. Uh, a certain faction of our country is trying, frequently tries to paint athletes uh, as rich, spoiled troublemakers, and it's it's amazing how much evidence to the contrary continues to pile up. You know what your team did today. Kevin Durant is uh, sponsoring a program to pay you know first year tuition for kids. Uh, we see you know LeBron James constantly doing good things for his community or for, or for you know kids across the nation. Uh, the Warrior, other Warriors players are very uh, socially conscious, including Steph Curry. We're, and, you know we're we're seeing just so much of this. I know you know locally all the teams do a lot. I was in, a, in Randy Shaver's golf tournament the other day, and you know there was Rick Spielman and a bunch of Vikings employees and hockey players. It, it's it's really funny how if you pay any attention at all, that meme about selfish, you know, arrogant, spoiled players and and professional athletes just it just doesn't hold any water. It doesn't. I you know I have found, I've been in sports for a long, long time, you know, darn near thirty years in terms of uh, being a professional, and everywhere I've been, uh, the athletes are the same which is they're really in tune to ways in which they can help their communities and they understand how empowering it is. Uh, specifically with the WNBA, uh, it's what we're about. It is a huge part of our identity, you know, that, that it's so much more than basketball, you know, that we're able to use sport as a vehicle of change. And, and so for us, it, you know, it's, it's, we were here representing the Minnesota Lynx and, and our championship, but we also were standing there for 144 players of the WNBA because uh, this is what we're about. And, and like you said, I think it's uh, professional athletes everywhere and, and really collegiate athletes as well. Everywhere I've been, you know, there's, uh, they understand the impact that they can have on their communities and, you know, financial help. And so, yeah, I don't, um, you know, I don't share the, you know, the same belief of the, of the, of the faction that you mentioned. My name is Jim Suhan. This is my network, talknorth.com. Cheryl has uh, added so much to the network. I'm very appreciative of her, of her being willing to spend her time with, with us and our audience. Brandon Morton is our producer. Do you want to thank again, Freehouse North Loop, Minneapolis. Our next show live show with Cheryl will be 6 PM on Monday, June 11th. Uh, please come out and hang out with us. We'd love to see you. We love meeting uh, our listeners. I know Cheryl loves meeting Lynx fans and, and women's basketball fans anytime she can uh, tell you a little more about Freehouse again on Washington Avenue in North Loop. They have a beautiful outdoor patio. They have a really cool bar area. They make their own beers, including a bunch of experimental beers. Uh, they have a huge uh, restaurant area. There's always lots of room. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of, on different shows, we'll tell you about different aspects of their business, tell you, tell you about the, their breakfast. I know Cheryl enjoys their breakfast very much. I like their andouille hash. I tend to love kind of a Southern cooking and New Orleans style of cooking. And uh, it's eggs, potato, carrot, peppers, edamame, uh, Bernays sauce, and toast. They also have avocado toast. If you're a millennial, you got to go here for the avocado toast, right? Uh, so please check out Freehouse, freehousempls.com, and we will see you Monday night, 6 p.m. at Freehouse in the North Loop. Uh, you actually have some news to report. You signed 
a player. Uh, tell me if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Andy Mayam. 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 Thank you. And she's uh, obviously she's French. She's very accomplished internationally. She's six foot two. You thinking of her as kind of a power forward type? She is. Yeah, she's got a skill set that I think would be helpful to us. You know, we we had plans. Uh, you know, in the off season, you know, we signed her to a training camp contract and you know, try to figure out which direction this thing was going to go. And, and when Andy reported, it was just a few days until the, uh, the final roster uh, had to be submitted. And Andy at that time had an injury uh, that, that she was, uh, it was going to keep her from being able to, to be on the court. So we made a decision to, to wait uh, to sign her uh, you know, back as a 12th player when we had the money available. So uh, excited to add her. I, I think, uh, you know, one, she's, she's 30 years old, so she's mature. Uh, you know, she's played, you know, professionally overseas. She's played, you know, for uh, Olympic teams and, you know, so has a, a wealth of experience in, in competition. Has never played in the WNBA. So, you know, you don't know how, um, you know, players respond to that. But I think that uh, her skill set is one that, you know, she's able to shoot the ball. You know, she's, you know, like you said, a power forward that can give us a little more spacing, uh, that can knock down shots and, and make it much harder to, to double down on Sill. And, and uh, I think she's a mature player, a smart player. Uh, has a big personality, which we really enjoy, and, and uh, so we're looking forward to adding her to the group. Do you, you saw her in Rio, correct, when you were assistant on the U.S. team? Yeah, she. so she was a part of the 2012 uh, London Games. I, I was there, okay. but I was not on the staff. Uh, but we have also since then, uh, in terms of my experience with the national team, we have uh, played them in a number of friendly games uh, along the way, and, and so I've, I've uh, you know, followed the team uh, closely, and then obviously having you know uh, James Wade on our staff uh, with his connection to France, we we were able to have a, a pretty good in and uh, getting uh, Miam to come over and, and compete. And she also has been teammates. Uh, she's currently a teammate of, of uh, Cecilia's uh, Zanda Lassini. Uh, they played in, in Italy together for the Skio uh, Club, and then also Simone Augustus has history with with Ending. She, uh, at some point, I don't know which team, but they were teammates. And so uh, Simone was very excited to hear that we were going to add her. So we're, yeah, we're excited to get her out there and see what she's got. At our last live show, we were talking with Steph Shimp, who uh, is a co-owner of the Blue Plate restaurants, including Free House. And she was mentioning how when she goes out to D.C., you know, Amy Klobuchar is one of the, the politicians from Minnesota who really makes time for her constituents when they're out there. Did you get a chance? Was Amy there today? Did she get a chance to be out at this uh, event? Wow, Jim, we, we had such an incredible showing uh, from from our Minnesota contingency. It was really, really special. Uh, we had congressmen. Um, we had it was so it was it was uh, Congressman Emmer, Congressman Dolan, Congressman Peterson. All, all made an appearance at the event, in addition to both of our centers who, you know, it's incredibly empowering, you know, to be professional women athletes and to be uh, one of just four states that has uh, historic representation in that both senators are female. And to, to have them be, you know, so uh, incredibly giving to us and, and representing us today, uh, they, they were the ones that uh, sort of, uh, you know, proclaimed, you know, our championship and, and talked about our successes on and off the floor, talked about what fans they were. You know, uh, Senator Smith was talked about being at Game Five at Williams Arena when we won, and and so they just get it. You know, Senator Senator Smith was there uh, as as Lieutenant Governor uh, in October uh, at, at the governor's uh, residence when when Governor Dayton celebrated our championship with us. So, you know, we just feel very very connected uh, to this group, and so for them to make the time to come out to the Payne Elementary School. It just made it made the experience all all the more special, and you know we had uh, uh, Representative Frankel from Florida, we had uh, from the Congressional Black Caucus Sheila Jackson Lee, who was a representative from Texas. Uh, we had representation from Human Rights Campaign. We had a representative from the NFL Players Association. It was really really incredible and very very empowering, and so it was a it was special, and I'm so appreciative to uh, how great uh, Minnesotans treat each other. That's great stuff, and I love seeing the photos. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, hopefully, we'll have something in the Star Tribune on Thursday uh, off of this. Let's talk a little bit of basketball. We're going to save kind of the in-depth basketball discussion for Monday night, but let's just, let's just hit on. 